Some people argue that, um, that we have a confirmatory test in some parts, some Western countries, and that repeated testing can lead you to a safer diagnosis. Um, but if the very basis of the test is faulty, then nothing works, in fact. The confirmatory test is a bit more uh, sophisticated, in which you take the virus and you break it up into its different components and you put it on a strip that separates the different components and it's called a western blot. So the western blot actually looks at bands of the proteins. When there is an interaction of the antibody with the viral protein in question, let's say the viral protein that's called P24 or the envelope we call GP120, when you see bands lighting up, well, those are surely the viral proteins because they're scoring of exactly the size that we know the viral proteins to be. And you only see those bands when the antibody has interacted with them. When you're looking at this, this Western blot, how do you determine what is a positive? You need a certain number of bands being present. It depends a little bit on the producer of the test. It depends on the manufacturer. Is, yeah. is there different criteria for what might be a positive? Yeah, there are different criteria from the manufacturer, <laughs> thank you for the word. And also um, there are guidelines from the WHO and UNAIDS. Claudia showed me the package insert that comes with the Western blot. It contains eight different sets of criteria for diagnosing HIV infection. Because of the different criteria that apply in different countries, you can be considered you can test HIV positive in one country and be given an AIDS diagnosis as a result of that, whereas in another country you won't test HIV positive and you won't be given an, an AIDS diagnosis. It's ludicrous that you can be positive in one country and not positive in another. This is where the argument was early on, is how do you define criteria. In the early days, um, be, uh, people actually uh, develop criteria that were too much like a screening test. So if you had just P24, they might have caused, called it a positive. Many people were diagnosed using these criteria, and then it was realized that 40% of people have, who are completely healthy have one or more Western blot bands, most commonly a P24 band. We don't know how many thousand people were tested using the Western blot, that, that Western blot criteria before 1987, but it, it, it invites the question, shouldn't they all be tested, shouldn't they have all been tested when the criteria changed after 1987 in case they were no longer positive? Because after 1987 that wasn't good enough to make you HIV positive. So there are probably people out there who would not be positive on the criteria which developed subsequently. Yep. What was the criteria pre-1987? P24 or P41 or both. And, and people were diagnosed just with one. People had to learn how to, what's the right criteria for reading Western blots. If you actually go back and look at the document you know, over time, those criteria changed. Up until 1993, the FDA criteria were a lycoprotein like band plus P24 plus P32. They actually specified what the bands were. Now, using the FDA criteria, which existed before 1993, only 80% of AIDS patients had a positive test. That is, they had a, po a positive Western blot test, which means 20% were not positive on the FDA criteria. Wait, was it 80% tested positive? 80% tested positive, 20% didn't on the FDA criteria. That had AIDS? That had AIDS, clinical AIDS, yes. Okay. okay? Now, in 1993, the FDA changed their criteria. They dropped the, the, the need to have P32. What was the result of the change? They had more positives on the FDA criteria. There were more positive tests. The FDA criteria were said to be the most specific, but they weren't the most used. The CDC criteria are the most used in the United States which means that people were not tested in the United States using the most specific test. There are specific criteria for um, 
interpreting Western black results. And uh, specifically, if you don't have the three um, bands, the three major HIV bands, P24, GP41, and GP12160, then it still would not be a positive result. The one we're using here is where we have at least two of three major bands appearing in here, and at that point we'll call it a positive. Most people that are infected, most people will have a full profile against all the viral components. In order to limit the number of false positives, how come they don't just, in terms of the Western blood, how come the criteria isn't just all nine proteins? If you react with all nine proteins and you're positive, how come it's only limited to three? I don't know the answer to that. It's probably because they're harder to see on some of the other bands that are overlapping with some other proteins, but like I, I don't know. Okay. In an effort to make the Western blood a little more specific, do you think we should maybe up the bands to like four, four or five? There's constant discussion in the community of people who do diagnostic testing and the blood bankers about how to read these tests. And you can get together a group of people and they may or may not agree. So all these tests are read in a way that we think is the optimal reading, but it's not ever going to be perfect. Why don't they up the criteria from two bands, like four or five? I don't think the Western blot is a useful diagnostic test. I don't think it's worth doing. But it's a useful prognostic test. Once you know that someone is infected, then you can follow their antibody response as well with Western blots. You're looking forwards into how the patient's going to do in the future in a prognostic test. Diagnosts say, is the patient infected or not? You don't need a Western blot. And it's become a dogma in HIV research that you need one ELISA followed by a Western. You don't. You need two different kinds of ELISAs made in two different formats. Uh, Western blots have been sort of promoted into some sort of holy grail. This has a margin of error done properly that's extremely low. In other words, it's one of medicine's better tests. If the Western blood is such a great test, why isn't it used in England? I mean, Philip Mortimer, who's the director of their National Reference Laboratory in, 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 the, in the United Kingdom, says that it, it began and, uh, and should have remained a research tool. So you ask some of your experts in the United States if it's such a great test, how come the English don't have to use it? I don't know. I can't comment about that because I'm not really sure what, why they did that. Oh, okay. I'd hate to make a comment about another country's practice when I'm not really sure what okay, they did. No problem. Okay.